So this is the Samsung Galaxy. No, we're not starting the video off like that. Reviewers, please stop starting your videos off like that. Do something creative or new, you idiots. Including me, a little bit. Something crazy happened the other day. Vodafone got in touch and said, do you want to review a phone? We'll send it to you and loan it to you for free. And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> this has never happened before. So that's crazy. They did it. And it just so happened to be a phone that's very controversial, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. Even more controversial because it's the UK one and it doesn't come with a Snapdragon processor. The Galaxy Note 20 was an odd choice because I don't spend a lot of money on my phone and so reviewing something made of plastic that cost a thousand pounds is a little bit different. So I sat out and used it for a couple of weeks on and off since I was reviewing other devices during the time. By the way, link in the video description to that unlimited time with 5G for free. Yes, I'm going to plug that in this video. Unfortunately, where I live isn't part of the 116 global locations where you can use Vodafone 5G, but it is available for those who have it. I'll be honest, the Note 20 wasn't my first choice, but it was something that I was interested in looking at, so I did. When I come back to a Samsung device, I do tend to really enjoy using them. The Galaxy S7 Edge, the Note 4, the Note 8, the Note 9, and one of my most recent favourites, the Galaxy S10e, have all been great devices for me. I think it usually comes down to three things for me. One, the impeccable software. Two, the brilliant build quality. And three, are the best in class displays. Here's why two of those things aren't up to scratch and why, spoiler alert, I don't think I've really got on with this phone that much. Let's talk about One UI 2. In my opinion, this is the third party software done at its best. There are heaps of skins out there with modified interfaces, but Samsung does it better than everyone else. It feels clean, smooth and balanced and has loads of features without ramming them down your throat. Also, three years of software support. Nice. Then there's the screen. 6.7 inches, 1080p, 60 hertz. Um, the Galaxy S4 called, it wants its screen specs back, albeit a little bit smaller. Let me make this clear, in a vacuum and without specs, the display on the Galaxy Note 20 is brilliant. It's, it gets really bright, it gets really dim, the contrast is amazing, colors are fantastic. It, it's a Samsung display, it's, it's good, but when you look at it in the context of the market and the technology world that we're in right now, it doesn't make much sense. Firstly, it's locked at 1080p. We've had Quad HD Samsung smartphones since the Galaxy S5, so why haven't we got that here, especially for £1,000? And two, if you weren't going to put a Quad HD display in it, you should at least make it 90 hertz, if not 120 at this resolution for this amount of money. And you haven't done that either. So it doesn't really work. Like, it, it just looks like you haven't looked at the market and instead decided, yeah, we'll just stick this in this. Yeah, just, yeah, might, might as well do that. It makes you wonder where Samsung put all their R&D money, because it definitely isn't in the build materials either. Sure, there are metal sides, but also a frosted plastic back? Okay, it looks all right from a distance, but holding the thing, like, glossy plastic would have been a better choice. As soon as you pick it up, it just doesn't feel right. Unfortunately, you can make plastic try to feel like glass as much as you want and it kind of works if you use a glassy glossy kind of plastic but when you use frosted plastic it doesn't feel like frosted glass it's you just cannot replicate that or maybe you can but samsung certainly hasn't that said the color is gorgeous and yeah every phone manufacturer should make a phone in this color because i i'm in love with it but then it goes to crap again right after because the galaxy note 20 has the same chip as the note 10 at least in Europe. It's had a lot of coverage in the media over the past couple of months, but yeah, in Europe we're getting these Exynos chips which aren't as fast, and they certainly aren't as good on battery life. Which doesn't make sense, because if Samsung's making everything in there, including the software skin, and the system on chip, surely they'd be able to optimise it, but they haven't, and Qualcomm does it better, and if you're paying the same amount of money in the UK as the US, but you're getting an Exynos instead of a Snapdragon, then you're not really getting a good deal. Don't get me wrong, again, in a bubble, the Exynos is fine. It's it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fast and it lasts plenty on a on a battery. It's, it's good, but it it's just not what the Snapdragon version is and it just feels like we're getting swindled. Like don't get me wrong, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of storage and an Exynos 990. It's plenty fast. It's just not in context the right thing. 
There's plenty of charging support. It's 25 watt fast charging, although you will have to pay more. It's actually 15 watt charger in the box. There's 15 watt wireless charging and wireless power share as well. So you've got plenty of options there, but it's not the fastest, especially when you see like Xiaomi with 100 watt charging and a lot of these like cheaper Realme phones with like 50, 60 watt charging. Why is it so much cheaper on the Samsung model, but the Samsung model is more expensive? It, it just doesn't make any sense. But then what can I say about the S Pen that hasn't already been said? There's a reason why I use a Galaxy Note 8 for my work phone. It's just so handy for signing documents, taking notes and making silly drawings when you're meant to be doing some actual work. It's great on this phone. It's not as great as on the Ultra, which has much lower latency and some extra features. But on this, it works just fine. I'm not going to complain. I really do like the S Pen. Cameras are really important in today's smartphone age and Samsung devices have always kind of done them pretty well. However, with this one out of the box, there's a lot of added sharpness and a lot of added saturation. I was kind of shocked. Maybe it has been a while since I last used one of these. Photos look very poppy and if that's the look you're going for, then great. But I prefer a, more of a flat image. So perhaps this isn't a bad camera at all, but maybe one that I wouldn't use personally. I prefer more dynamic range and like I said, a flatter image. I'm boring, sue me, but there is plenty of versatility and the video recording is great. So it's not all doom and gloom. In fact, I would say this is one of the better cameras that I've used recently. It's just nothing crazy on paper. And like I said, those colors are more of a personal thing. So all of this wrapped up in a thousand pound package. Maybe that's a little bit unfair because there have been quite a few deals on this and you can regularly pick one of these up for around £800 or even £700. And for that kind of money, it does start to make a lot more sense. It's a really good phone and I think Samsung makes all round phones better than anyone else. I think the only close second would have been Huawei, but you saw how that happened and without the Google Play Store, it's kind of useless in the West unless you specifically don't like using Google products but the majority of us do and we just kind of have to live with that. I don't think the iPhones get too close either. I think Samsung just, it gets software pretty much spot on. It gets performance well, it does, it does battery life very versatile, but maybe not the best battery life or the fastest charging. It definitely does screens the best. Although in this model, <laughs> yeah, that's a yikes. It does build quality very well. Although again, in this model, yeah. If anything, it feels like the Note 20 isn't actually a Samsung Note and is more like an A series or even less than that. So if you're looking to buy one, like it's a good phone, don't get me wrong, but look at all the fantastic options out there, including just spending a little bit more and buying the Ultra. Okay, it is a, a little bit more than a little bit more, but you, you kind of get the point. If you're on the used market and you really don't care about the latest and greatest, buy Galaxy Note 9. They are fantastic value at like 400 pounds they are amazing you get the s pen you get a nice big screen cameras are fantastic great battery life i i will probably never stop recommending that phone if you're looking for the latest and greatest in terms of speed and screen and performance buy a oneplus 8 pro they are great smartphones but whatever you do think very long and hard and do your research before buying a note 20 because it just doesn't make much sense Stick around to hear about Vodafone's unlimited 5G network. Vodafone has partnered with Amazon Prime and YouTube Premium to add its big collection of entertainment apps like Now TV and Spotify Premium. Add this to your package by picking Vodafone and save money on stuff you probably already pay for. Very Me Rewards have also been introduced as a loyalty program to personalise deals and meet your individual taste for daily rewards like money off a well-known smartphone brand like Samsung. This can be found in the My Vodafone app like what we had on our Note 20 review unit today. Before I end this video, I just wanna say a massive thank you to those who came back after my one month break of, or maybe even longer than that, of not posting videos. I just wanted some time off, I'm back. I'm not gonna be posting super regularly, like once a week, but I'm still gonna be posting more often now. And I also wanna give a massive, massive thanks to Vodafone for lending me this phone. I actually had it a little longer than they said they were going to lend it to me for and I'm hoping that everyone's okay with that because I haven't had any angry emails but it's also meant that I, I can spend some more time with the phone because I review a lot of phones around authority and I felt like if I just gave it a week for this phone it would be a little unfair since Android authority is my priority and I want to thank everyone for watching please do like dislike comment and subscribe if you never miss my gosh it's been a while since I've done this Thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment, subscribe to never miss a video like this one. And also check out all my social medias in the link in the video description. I've been Ryan Thomas, and I'll catch you later. Peace.